All right, so on to Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle says that when a reaction is at equilibrium, and that's the key, the reaction has to be at equilibrium, so no more changes occurring in my concentration of reactants or products, no net change. So the reaction is at equilibrium, and some change occurs. So I heat it up, I cool it down, I take something out, I put something in, I increase the pressure, decrease the, pres the pressure. Something happens. The reaction will shift to compensate for that change. So some shift will occur to move that equilibrium one direction or the other towards reactants or towards products to compensate for whatever change has occurred. So we're going to go through each of the possible changes uh, that could occur and what the reaction would do as a result. So first let's talk about changes in concentration. This is kind of the easiest to visualize, the easiest to do. <clears throat> so first let's say what happens if I take my reaction, it's at equilibrium, and I add some more reactants. Well, if I add more reactants, it follows logic that my reaction would make more products, so more products would form. In chemistry E's, we say that the reaction shifts right. It shifts towards the products because we've added products, thus we've made more products. My reaction has shifted to compensate for this change, so I shifted away from products towards my reactants. The opposite, if reactants are removed, so I take out my reactants, my reaction is going to shift towards that hole to make more reactants, to fix that gap. So the reaction shifts left towards the reactants to compensate for that hole. Products follow the same pattern. So if products are added, we're going to shift away from my products towards my reactants. If products are removed, my reaction is going to shift to compensate for that hole. We'll shift towards the products. So, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, I got all this allergy nonsense going on. Let's say I have this reaction, and these are all in gaseous form. So hydrogen gas reacts with chlorine gas to produce hydrochloric acid in gaseous form. <clears throat> Excuse me while I get a drink of water. If I were to remove my HCl, to take some of this out, my reaction is going to shift towards that hole, towards this gap here. We're going to make more reactants. So my reaction shifts. Again, we removed HCl, we took some of this out, so my reaction is going to try to fill this hole. So my reaction shifts that way. Left, I'll write all the versions of it I can, towards reactants, trying to fill that hole. On our next one there, it asks us what would happen if we removed HCl. That's a product over here. So again, I'm creating a hole. So my reaction is going to shift to fill that hole, which is towards the right, towards my products. On our last one here, we're going to add H2. We're adding a reactant, more of this, so I'm going to shift away from my excess towards my products. So reaction shifts that away, right, towards our products, because we're moving away from that excess there. So that's our first example, dealing with uh, changes in the concentration. Now let's talk about changes in pressure. What happens when I change the pressure? of my reaction vessel of what other kind. So to do that, we have to quickly talk about some of our gas laws. 
First off, remember that the easiest way to change our pressure is to change our volume. So if you're changing the volume of your box, you are also changing the pressure, which is going to force our reaction to shift. Boyle's Law is our first example of that, changing our volume. Also, if our amount can change, that will also affect volume. So says our Avogadro's Law here. <clears throat> So if my pressure is to increase, so let's say I decrease the volume of my box or reaction vessel of what other kind. If I increase my pressure, my reaction is going to shift to whichever side of my reaction, reactants or products, that has less. So look at the moles created. Moles in a reaction is indicated by our coefficients. So whichever side has a total of less moles, <clears throat> That's the direction my reaction is going to shift because we have less space, less room, if you will, because of that increased pressure. When I decrease, oh my goodness, I wrote the same thing twice. When I decrease pressure, now I have more space. So my reaction is going to shift to the side with more moles because I want to fill that space. So for example, here's our reaction. Two nitrogen dioxide molecules reacting to form one dinitrogen tetraoxide molecule. If I were to increase my pressure, so I have decreased space, if you will, for those molecules to bounce around. If you look at the left side of my reaction, I have two moles of gas, as indicated by my two here. On the right, I have one mole of gas. So my reaction is going to shift to the side that has left, to the right. And again, you can usually use one of these phrases. I'm just writing them all, so you'll have seen them. <clears throat> Why? Because there's less moles on this right-hand side. On the flip side, if I were to decrease pressure, that means my particles have more space to bounce around. So my reaction shifts towards the sides with more, which is my reactants side, which is to the left. Because of all that extra space, my particles have to move. Our last possibility of things that I can change in my reaction is a change in temperature. Now we said that K's only work for a particular temperature, so equilibrium, when I change the temperature, all bets are off anyway. <laughs> but we get to treat temperature just like a compound. A temperature is more than, is nothing more than adding or taking away heat. There is no such thing as cold, per se. Cold is just the absence of heat. So if we treat heat like any of our other reactants or products, that makes this a lot easier. So think of excess or exothermic reactions, reactions that give off heat. Think of heat as a product. So you can actually write the word heat on the product side of your reaction. Endothermic reactions take in heat. They need heat to work. So heat is a reactant, actually appears on that reactant's side. So, for example, if I take water and I split it into its component gases, it is an exothermic reaction, so I've written heat over here as a product. So this now will follow the same rules as the first change that we talked about, changes in concentration. If I add heat, I'm adding a product. My reaction will shift away from the excess this way. So my reaction shifts to the left, away from that excess. This one I phrased slightly differently. I said that the temperature was decreased. Well, decreasing temperature is nothing, amo nothing more than removing heat. So again, heat is present over here as a product. So if I'm removing heat, my reaction 
will shift towards the hole. <clears throat> so let's look at an example that combines all of these different possibilities of changes that we can make. This is a combustion reaction reacting methane with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water, and this is an exothermic reaction, so there's heat as my product. First possibility, we add methane. Here's methane. Over on the left-hand side, it is a reactant. If I add methane, we're going to shift away from the excess towards the right. So my reaction shifts towards products. Why, you might ask? Excess reactant. So it's going to shift away from excess. To use up that excess reactant we have put in. Next possibility, pressure is increased. Remember, pressure deals with total moles of gas on each side. Well, let's see how many we've got. One mole of this, two moles of that. We've got three moles of gas on the right, or on the left, excuse me, on this side. Over here, one mole of gas. Two mole of gas, that's three. Oh, no change. One side doesn't have less than the other. No change. Next says carbon dioxide is added. Carbon dioxide is a product here. So again, we're going to shift away from the excess. means we're going to shift to the left. Towards... Reactants, same reason away from excess. Our last possibility here, my room is cooled. Cooled means that we took away heat, heat removed. No such thing as cold. We had to take out heat. Well, heat is a product, so we have removed product. So my reaction is going to shift towards the hole. We're going to try to fill the hole. So, reaction shifts to the right towards products, and we're filling that hole. We're filling that empty space. Well, I hope that gives you kind of an introduction to Le Chatelier's and how reactions can shift based on a change made after that equation has reached equilibrium. Next, we'll be coming up on ice tables, trying to predict equilibrium or initial concentrations based on previously known knowledge. See you then.